Deodon, despite being sort of the Tyrannosaurus of its time, FYI I hate any and all comparisons of any prehistoric creature to Tyrannosaurus, but it partially works here, has never been portrayed particularly well nor often in any form of paleomedia. On top of that, it has only been done well about one time. Prehistoric Mammals, Life of Mammals, BBC Earth, 2002 The Life of Mammals is a nature documentary series written and presented by David Attenborough, first transmitted in the UK on November 20th, 2002. The series functioned as a study of the evolution and habits of various mammal species. It was the fourth of Attenborough's specialized surveys following his major trilogy that began with Life on Earth. Each of the 10 episodes looks at one or several closely related mammal groups and discusses the different facets of their day-to-day -day existence and their evolutionary origins. All of the programs are of 50 minutes duration except the last, which extends to 59 minutes. The series was produced by the BBC Natural History Unit in conjunction with the Discovery Channel. The executive producer was Mike Salisbury, and the music was composed by Dan Jones and Ben Salisbury. It was later shown on Animal Planet. Deodon makes an appearance when David discusses the evolution of mammals. The CGI representation is outdated in the ways Deodon and other Intellidons are usually always outdated. They have skin stretched taut across their skulls, while the real animal probably had a lot more soft tissues covering the skull. This newer reconstruction technique is based on the Intellidont's closest living relatives, the whales, pigs, and hippos, as well as the fact that the majority of living mammals have a ton of soft tissue covering even the gnarliest bony projections of the skulls. Mega Predators, 2004. Mega Predators is an American television documentary about prehistoric predators that aired only once on the Discovery Channel in 2004. It was narrated by Jonathan Booth and features paleontologists such as Larry Martin, Bob Bakker, Richard Holloway, among others. The documentary covers prehistoric predators, most of them from the Cenozoic, and how they hunted, their extinction, their relationships with early humans, and comparisons to their modern-day counterparts. Mega Predators also has segments showing each of these prehistoric animals as CGI models in environments in the present day, chasing, attacking, or eating people to illustrate how connected they are to their habitat, but also because it was damn cool. Anyway, an Archaeotherium appears on a hog farm where it chases down the farmer and presumably eats him. I don't know why I included it here when even Bob Bakker uses an Archaeotherium skull as an example, but I figured it sort of fit the vibe I was going for. Anyway, the model is awful anatomically for having way too bony cheeks and not enough meat to fill out the skull. Prehistoric Predators 2007 Prehistoric Predators was a 2007 National Geographic Channel program based on different predators that lived in the Cenozoic era, including Smilodon and Megalodon. The series investigated how such beasts hunted and fought other creatures, and what drove them to extinction. Episode 6, Killer Pig, is the one that focuses on Antelodons, specifically Archaeotherium and Deodon. These are some of the best reconstructions ever put to screen. National Geographic had a bigger budget than past documentaries, so they were able to get some more input into their designs. These guys were also a little bony, but nowhere near as bad as previous reconstructions. They were right on the money with giving the Archaeotherium more bony protuberances than the Deodon, which is reflected in their skulls. Not so sure they would have been capable of making the jerky movements they make in the show, though. Sure, mammals move fast and swift, but they don't move like CGI robots with split-split-second robotic lizard movements as far as I've seen. We tend to need to process things in seconds or split-seconds rather than microseconds, if you catch my drift. But that is definitely a nitpick for sure. Jurassic Park Builder and Jurassic World The Game Jurassic Park Builder was a 2012 construction and management simulation video game developed and published by Ludia for iOS and Android operating systems, as well as Facebook. 
The game, based on the Jurassic Park series, allows the player to build a theme park featuring extinct animals. Ludia ended the game's support as of March 30th, 2020. In 2015, Ludia released an updated version of the game titled Jurassic World The Game to coincide with the release of the film Jurassic World. Deodon was one of the mammals you could buy in the Glacier Park in Jurassic Park Builder. Basically, each and every fun fact the game gave you on this animal was wrong in one way or another, whether it was a lie or just too simple to be accurate. The reconstruction itself was also awful, furless, and wolf-like. Deodon does not come back in Jurassic World the game, instead the Entelodons here are Entelodon and Archaeotherium. Oddly enough, the Entelodon here seems to be based mostly on commonly seen paleo art of Deodon. Ark Survival Evolved Ark Survival Evolved, stylized as Ark, is a 2017 action-adventure survival video game developed by Studio Wildcard. In the game, players must survive being stranded on one of several maps filled with roaming dinosaurs, fictional fantasy monsters, and other prehistoric animals, natural hazards, and potentially hostile human players. Deodon appears in this game and is probably one of the worst representations of the animal with access to the largest audience. It isn't particularly bad, but it falls into a lot of the pitfalls that previous reconstructions have, with an appearance unlike anything it is related to and pretty much just a transmutation of various mammal lineages. Prehistoric Kingdom Prehistoric Kingdom is a business simulation game developed by Blue Meridian and published by Critivo. In development, Prehistoric Kingdom will be released completely around 2023-2024, with an openly playable early access available since April 27th of 2022. Deodon is one of the planned species of mammals for the game, with full fleshy and muscly goodness in based directly on the freshest and most up-to-date science. It comes in three skins, lined, wallow, and mottled. It even has huge hippo-like lips. Forgotten Bloodlines, Agate. And finally, the most recent appearance of the mighty hell pig, Deodon, in a piece of paleomedia, is a special piece of paleomedia that has yet to be completed. This piece of paleomedia is called Forgotten Bloodlines, Agate, and I'll let it tell you what it is. Forgotten Bloodlines Agate is a photorealistic animated documentary focusing on prehistoric life 20 million years ago, narrated by the wonderful Nigel Marvin. It takes place in the early Miocene of the Agate Fossil Beds, one of the richest collections of extinct life from the epoch. Over the course of three 15-minute episodes, you will be taken back to a place forgotten to time. Agate Springs is a vast and unique snapshot into the world of the Miocene. This was a pivotal point in Earth's history as the ancient forms of mammals coexisted with the earliest relatives of modern-day mammalian families. This was an evolutionary arms race in a rapidly warming climate. Agate Springs hosted a wide variety of fossilized fauna, early horses, camels, rhinoceros, and beavers, living alongside the likes of calicotheres, antelodons, and bear dogs, species all of which have long since disappeared. In Forgotten Bloodlines Agate, you will be taken on a journey into the lives of two of these bizarre beasts, a male Deodon trying to survive within a volatile ecosystem, and a female Meropus who must overcome the perils of independence. It is an incredible journey for both of these mammals, 20 million years in the making. How will they survive? Will they prevail? What sort of creatures will they encounter? The story of how this project came to be could be just about as interesting as the land it's based off of. Pre-production kicked off in early 2020, right before the COVID-19 lockdowns. This allowed for the team to spend time in quarantine to research and consult on scientific information about the landscape from the climate and plants to references for the animal cast, which would be used not only for reconstructions but for animations and behaviors, influencing the script writing in the process. Storyboarding and rough drafts of the screenplay were conceptualized in April of that year, and with them complete, the rigorous task of modeling the animal cast began. The team spent many hours designing the animals down to the last detail to bring them to life, ensuring their reconstructions were as faithful and accurate to life as possible.
Perhaps the biggest breakthrough during this pre-planning stage was the hiring of the project's narrator and composer, Nigel Marvin and Sarah Klass, respectively. Nigel being a renowned British naturalist with experience in the prehistoric world, and Sarah, an award-winning musician and film composer who is no stranger to working with nature documentaries. The team behind this project is led by Max Bellomio, who is the director, lead animator, and creator of the project. Having contributed to nearly every part of Agate, this is a passion project accumulated from almost 10 years of 3D animation and modeling experience, much of which has been devoted to a love of prehistory. The team also includes the likes of Brennan Stockermans, who is a scientific illustrator and paleoartist from Cleveland, Ohio, who is particularly interested in bird watching and wildlife photography. On Agate, Brennan has lent his skills in videography to inform that the visuals match what a real wildlife documentary would capture while consulting in color grading, supplying video, and producing concept art for the film. Christian Halliwell, who is a lifelong amateur paleo nerd who loves exploring writing as a medium for paleo art. Currently a music production undergraduate exploiting higher education as a means to better record a variety of strange guitar noises, Christian is the project's writer and co-director. Bailey. Bailey is a 3D animator. Very passionate about animals, she is one of the lead animators for the Daphonodon and has worked on the Cenozoic Survival Project. Jonathan Harris, a professional 3D artist with an obsession for prehistoric animals. John has been sculpting, modeling, and animating for 10 years. For this project, he is animating some of the animals. Jacob Sutton Jacob is a film student graduate from Flashpoint, Chicago. Jacob has had a long-standing passion for film and prehistory. He works as the main sound designer and audio engineer, but also as an assistant editor for the main film and promotional material. He has also helped to manage and create the webpage. Midiao Diallo Midiao is a Guinean, Queens-based creative working in many mediums, among them being music, film, and illustration. Miao is one of the project's sound designers, consultants, writers, and concept and storyboard artists. Benjamin Yu Benjamin Yu is a wildlife enthusiast and amateur artist who has always held a passion for nature, both extinct and extent. He has always had a particular interest in birds, and as such, he works as a consultant and concept artist for the extinct birds in this project. Drew Franklin Drew is a visual artist currently studying illustration at the Rhode Island School of Design. His, sometimes obsessive, interest in wildlife fuels his artistic practice. As such, he was overjoyed to have the opportunity to work on storyboarding and concepts for Forgotten Bloodlines. Aditya Srinath Aditya is an editor, screenwriter, and research consultant for this project. And Cameron Clow Cameron is a professional visualization artist with an emphasis in animation and shot creation. Located in LA, he is a graduate of Chapman University with a BFA in digital arts and an animation emphasis, along with a minor in LGBTQ studies. His career focuses include creature animation and animal anatomy, and past projects include Prehistoric Planet, many films in the MCU, and more. While this is all certainly interesting, the question still remains, why Agate Springs? The answer lies in the featured fauna and the novelty of the environment. While many animals you'll see will seem familiar, with some being represented in previous prehistoric nature documentaries, today they lack holistic portrayals within the paleontological world, coupled with the time this is set in. This turbulent period of climatic shift where the last ancient mammalian families survived alongside the basal relatives of modern groups made Agate Springs the ideal location to tell the story. The aim is to give proper representation to some old and new faces and narrate a crucial point in the history of life on Earth. What is Agate Springs? Agate Springs Fossil Bed National Monument, located in Harrison, Nebraska, was first established back on June 14, 1997. However, its history long predates its establishment. The site was first authorized in June of 1965 and was initially referred to as the Harold J. Cook Homestead, listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1977. 
This homestead was a functioning cattle ranch owned by Captain James Cook, no, not the same as the famous British naturalist, and became a famous site for former Native American settlements. And as a result, over 500 artifacts have been collected and are on display in the local museum. The vast collection of ancient mammal bones became the focal point of Agate Springs and put itself on the map as one of the most productive fossil-bearing locations not only in North America, but also on the entire planet. Scores of fossils have been discovered, many of which are nearly complete and in exquisite preservation. This was likely due to the unique taphonomic conditions of the locality. The valley was once filled with ephemeral water holes, bringing herds of extinct wildlife together during periods of drought, numerous species eventually succumbing to dehydration and exposure. Dating to the beginning of the Miocene between 20 and 16 million years ago, the landscape was warmer than today, ushering in a subtropical climate that featured grassy plains and wooded savanna biomes unique to North America's geography now confided to the American Midwest. This allowed for a menagerie of fauna to coexist almost akin to the Serengeti. Ancient mammal lineages such as entelodonts, calicotheres, oreodonts, protoceratids, and amphisionids survived alongside the basal ancestors of camels, horses, rhinos, and beavers. It was this transitional period in mammalian evolution that defined the Miocene Epoch. That brings us back to the help this project needs to get on its feet and complete all three episodes. That is when we come to Kickstarter. The first campaign covers only episode one out of three, but if the stretch goals are met, all three episodes will be funded. Stretch Goals This current campaign only funds the first out of three episodes. However, if we can make it reach 200,000 in donations, two can be completed, and all three can be finished if 350k are raised. While funding just the pilot first episode would be amazing, it would be even better if the entire miniseries can be funded. Scientific Rigor Forgotten Bloodlines Agate aims to depict the most scientifically accurate representation of Miocene life ever put to screen. Most depictions of life from this epoch, the ones that do exist, are outdated or of low quality, but the team is determined to change that. Heavily researched and aided by scientific advisors in their field, the team will present this odd yet strangely familiar ecosystem in the realest way possible through 3D animation software rendered with Fox Render Farm. While speculative behavior is included, they made sure it's based on logical reasoning and balanced with directly known fossil evidence. They aim to make this educational, but also dynamic and enthralling as they examine the lives these prehistoric animals may have led. How will your donations be used? The team wants this miniseries to be the best it could possibly be in all aspects. Unfortunately, creating a 3D animated film is expensive, which is why we all need your help. This has been a passion project for the moderately sized yet incredibly talented team for almost three years, working unpaid and using their own sums of money to fund the project up to this point. Animation takes a very long time and they can't continue to pursue such an ambitious project without paying their artists' salaries to work full-time. All funds will go towards paying the wonderful members of the team who put their heart and soul into their craft, the majority of which will go towards animation, with a smaller portion funding music, concept art, and marketing. With your help, they can pay the best artists in the industry a fair wage and fully realize this truly special documentary. Why donate? If this campaign gets fully funded, the first episode of the miniseries will be completed and used as a pilot to gain support to develop the rest. If all the stretch goals are met, the entire series will be produced, plus even more Forgotten Bloodlines content to come. A successful Kickstarter not only means this one project will be completed, but opens the door for many more prehistory shows in the future. Can you guys imagine a Triassic one of these? <sighs> that would be sick. Where can I watch Forgotten Bloodlines Agate when it releases? A release date is currently unknown, as due to the nature of this project. They can't confidently say a release date until they have secured funding. They aim for the miniseries to release on an accessible streaming service or possibly YouTube. 
Regardless of the public release method, all backers will get free early access to it once complete. Rewards The Kickstarter for Forgotten Bloodlines Agate has already begun. As of the writing of this video, it has already surpassed 31k of the 75k goal. It has 19 days left to make it. Reward tiers go from as little as $5 to as much as 1000 The lowest tier reward is getting your name in the credits to get your stamp on this historic indie documentary. With increasing tiers providing bigger and better rewards, such as early access to the finished film, high-res wallpapers, the official soundtrack, digital art book, 3D files of the animals from the film for 3D printing, 3D printed models, an additional animal of your choice included or even a custom easter egg of your choice. Here's something I think might get this backed even more. You see, you can enter in as much money as you want with the pledge without reward option. That means you can technically donate as little as a dollar. Now, if all 127,000 of my wonderful subscribers were to toss just one dollar at this project, we could get it well over the initial goal and into the stretch goals. Let's do this, people. So without further ado, here is a trailer for Forgotten Bloodlines Agate. Twenty million years ago, the beginning of the Miocene Epoch. Although seemingly familiar, this is a world of wonder, mystery and danger. From tiny rhinos, the size of dogs, to bizarre horse-like giants with claws instead of hooves, and a pig-like behemoth with jaws that could crush bone. A world forgotten to time, never seen by the eyes of man, until now. This is the incredible story of two of America's most astounding bygone beasts. Step back into an ancient world, Forgotten Bloodlines Agate. Please support us on Kickstarter, now live.